so you feel your, your connections with, with the earth, your environment. So I think a lot of people might resonate that feeling. I mean, it's very hard not to see the newspaper. It's yeah. very hard not to see the news and realise that there's quite a blight going on in the environment. Oh, yeah. And people are, that's how people are awakened by going, look at all this, what we're doing. Yeah. Green Belt, Green Belt has never come in Brown Belt. Brown Belt yeah. has never come in industrial yeah. wasteland. Yeah. Look at the terrible things we're doing. Yeah. And uh, there's certainly been my connections to things as well. I don't think that's how the progression happens. That you you start noticing that your environment is damaging around you, and you're thinking, "Well, how can I? If I can see this, other people can see this. Yeah. And if other people are seeing this, I've got a kindred spirit with them. Let's link up. Let's do something." And you're now seeing a lot of uh, activism around that, uh, around those subjects, yeah. which is really, really positive. Yeah. But I think people are finding their spirituality through their um, community projects. People are finding each other, and that's quite wonderful to see. Actually, you're yeah. seeing people who would never speak to each other um, through the neighbours. They didn't know they were involved in the same groups or even the same political orientation. So you see people are coming together more, more and more often again. And I think it's, that's been certainly the last three years that I've been involved with activism that I have. I'm, I'm seeing that. Yeah. I know. It's quite humbling, actually. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I think, I, you know, going back to, as I think about it, the more, the more I think about what you were saying earlier, you know, it is, you know, the, the internet is, is, is both a, a blessing and a, a crippling disease somehow because everything is so instant that the community thing goes you know the, the one thing about a, you know I mean people choose to work on their own uh, the, 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 to become involved with, with any pagan part uh, I mean that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but but it, for, for me it was that original sense of identity that original Security of a, of, a, of a different family that uh, that, that appealed, and, and I'm not sure how we can ever get that back. You say something very important. There's a word that I've uh, I've seen a lot. I, I, it it stands out as a word. It's very important. That's identity. It appears a lot of people who I I mean, follow friend wise who are of the craft or have a, of a spiritual path. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing they they are striving for is identity in a world of a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. and you only find it. Um, but they, they, they change in a good way. They, they, once, once they understand who they are, what they are, yeah. and the position they can do for other people, and it, you suddenly realise that you're not the person who's down, being helped up by someone who is not. Yes, you find you're actually holding everyone's hand, everyone's yeah. all together. You know, the other thing about witchcraft, or, or any period, but especially witchcraft, is if you're prepared to, um, to go through all the... Uh, all the nonsense. You can make yourself quite famous very quickly, uh, and that's not something I ever sought. I didn't ever want to become. I, I did want to become famous, but I wanted to become a famous rock and roll drummer, um, and I desperately wanted that. Um, but but I found that with the craft, the craft was the most humbling thing, and the one thing that I that I've learned and continue to, to learn and continue to, to do every day is the fact that it's not who you are but it's the work that you do. And that's something which uh, you know which, which hopefully we're, we're passing on with the foundation. You know, we, we, the, the Dory Valiente Foundation uh, 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 and the Centre for Pagan Studies is a real open hands because we you know we need volunteers, we need people to get involved in Miami, but there's no hierarchy. We, we, we don't, do, do that. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest lessons I learned about uh, it's the work that you do was I mean I, I said the thing a little earlier on about Doreen saying well she could well, you know I can wash up and that was a big lesson but the last ever talk that Doreen Valiant did was, was we, we, by this time she'd become our patron when she said you know oh, is there anything I can do uh, eventually I went back to her and said well you could become our patron you lend your name to, to what we're trying to do. If you really believe in what we're doing is okay, then lend your name to it. She, she said she would, she did. And her last ever talk that she gave was, was for the Centre for Pagan Studies. And we did it. Um, and we called it, uh, because the daughter was 77 at the time, 76 maybe, but she was 77 when she died, 76 perhaps. And we called it, um, because of her age, we called it, it was an afternoon tea with Dorian Valiente. So we served everybody tea and cakes. And Dorian came along and she sat down and she gave a talk. 
and people asked her questions and she signed some books and things like that, which is great. And everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. She thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and at one point, I didn't, of course, when you run these things, you never see any of, any of what goes on except because you're too busy organising everyone else. At one point, I walked past this, um, the, the counter where, where yeah, there was a tinkling sound where all the pots and pans and all the cups were and stuff. And, um, and when, I, when I walked past and suddenly looked in, it was Marion Green. And uh, Marion Green was in there washing up. I said, Marion, what are you doing? I said, it needed doing, so I'm doing it. Exactly the same thing. It's not the work that, she, that it's, it's not her as a person that's important, it's the work that she does. And she saw the washing up needed doing, so she did the washing up. And that's exactly what Dory would do. So I do a lot of washing up. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant, that really is brilliant. Because I guess it is, it's what you do. It's, yeah, it is. That's how you, that's how you impress upon other people, just by yeah. them noticing you. Yeah. All, I, all I've tried to do over the last few years uh, is uh, keep Dorian's memory alive. Um, and I think we've been very successful in doing that. And make sure that her legacy is, is, is permanent, it's there for everybody for all time. It doesn't mean to say that they can wander off with on, on pieces and stuff, but it, no, it's there for everyone. I've given it all away. It's now owned by the nation, and, uh, and that I'm really happy about that. Really happy. So, what's, what's the future then? For is, is that uh, will it be? I don't want it. So, actually, told me once that uh, one of his ambitions really is to see it go on like a tour around, around, not necessarily the world or just the country, so people can actually have access to see the, the collections and kind of things. Well, the museum's there. going to be twofold. We um, we, we go through the lottery. And the Lottery these days is a much tighter organisation than it was. I mean, we've been involved in the, the uh, um, oh, what's it called, the um, Temporary Exhibitions Group for Museum, Temporary Museum Exhibitions Group for, for a long time. And uh, one of the things now that they say with the Lottery is that they, they you, you know, we, we, rather than approach them for, for a huge amount, is you've now got to approach them and prove the worth of, uh, of what you're doing. And the way to do that is to, is to establish public interest. So what we've done is we've put together, um, uh, 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 what will be permanent is a, is a temporary exhibition. So it'll be twofold. It's a, the place that we've got in, in East Sussex is going to be one, the first permanent exhibition, but it'll be probably for two years. So it becomes a temporary exhibition. But the building itself becomes our headquarters. So our offices and stuff there, and our, um, uh, our, st our storage facilities, our workshops, because quite a lot of Dorian's stuff is, is brittle, it's broken, it needs repairing. Um, it's, you know, it's ongoing. Uh, uh, you know, these 2,000 books were in Dorian's flat, which is quite damp. So I personally have been uh, paying for each book to be restored um, over the last sort of 14 years. I've taken X amount of books to along to. I, I, I mean, I currently, I, 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 I've lived in Spain for the last 14 years, and all the books are out there. So they're in a very good dry environment, but, but they're all water damaged. Not desperately, but, but they're all water damaged. So we've got a, a local guy there that, uh, that charges us 50 euros a book to to clean them back up and make them good again. So, you know, 2,000 books is a lot of 50 euros yeah, so to, to get through. So, so I've, I've been doing I've been, I've been doing that for, for a very long time. So so the the way it will work now is the fact that we will permanently have, we've, we've got, um, uh, we've got a couple of temporary exhibitions uh, in the pipeline as well. So this exhibition, it, it, it consists of 22 boards of uh, things and it, it forms a tunnel so we, we've got our own environment. Um, so we can actually take, dismantle the exhibition and take it, and take it away somewhere oh, else. Okay. So, so that will permanently happen. Not necessarily all 22 boards because they're you know, 4 feet wide, 8 feet tall, or 1.2, 1.2, 1.4. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but with a roof and lighting and sound and, 
and all the rest of it. But that 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 then becomes goes into our storage facility. So every time when there's a, when there's a temporary exhibition, which is, you know, for several months or maybe even a year or whatever, that can be bought out and taken and put somewhere else. So we've got the permanent. We will have the permanent exhibition and also right. temporary okay. exhibition. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Which is exactly the way a normal museum. Also, um, we will be the only museum of its type that will, will be fully accredited. So, we, which will work. When I say it's like a national museum, it's it's the fact that um, we, we will. We, our aim is to. Um, we're going through full accreditation. So, you know, the, the national galleries have to fulfil these things to get their certificates and all that sort of stuff. So, we're doing the same. But it's very very. Oh, sure, it is. Sure, huge, it is. huge amount. The collection's worth it. Yeah, well, it is. You know, we've got this uh, this this thing of Gerald Gardner's, and um, uh, to put it in a, a cabinet of its own, uh, which is environmentally looked after, so it's got all kinds of air conditioning and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you're looking at you know, over ten grand for one book. Yeah, it's expensive, but to do it properly and to preserve it for you know, the future generations, we have no choice but to do it that way. Yeah, because so. you say, we say in protected environments and so on, if you look at books that have been discovered, I say more recently they found more uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, very, very recently, yeah. um, Dead Sea Scrolls themselves, you know, were kept in pottery jars yeah. 2,000 years later, mm -hmm. and uh, most of that kind of text, what was in there, like the, uh, the Enochian text, no one thought they ever existed. No. Completely forgot at the time, they found them and they started burning them. And to realise what they were, it's like, uh, oh, yeah. wow, a whole new book of the, uh, that, that, uh, that time. Exciting stuff. It is, and uh, so do you think by that, by that <laughs> I guess my joking definition, do you think anything should be tucked away to be found in a future time, um, time capsule style? <laughs> well, that would be nice. Oh, I'll tell you what, we keep finding stuff. Uh, I, I, you know, um, Ashley especially has got, has become quite a historian. He, um, uh, I, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I think even more since I had these strokes, uh, my, my brain's not as sharp as it was. Um, but, but Ashley's becoming you know, really very academic and uh, he's done a lot of research into the, into the, uh, into the collection. And we, and we keep finding things. We've, we've, a few months back he was over and cataloguing and going through bits and pieces and he went, hang on a second, I know what that is, I think. Came back, we found some original Crowley stuff, which I didn't know we got. All right, so so this, you know, this is this is from Crowley, from Rollins Crowley. So uh, you know, Doreen was was interested in in, in everything, and of course, everyone. yeah. I, I give you one funny story. We um, the the original four of us that set that set up the set of a and studies and when Doreen died we, we brought all these books into into these cases and we brought them back to 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 the, to, the, to our house in Doreen's flat and we were just trying to sort them out, out a little bit as to what what goes where and and my colleague Ray suddenly came over and he showed me this book and he said what do we think we should do with this and I asked what is it he looked down it was a um, it was, I guess now you'd say it was, like, it was kind of a little bit uh, um, paedophilic. Okay. In, in, so because it was young boys, not, not very young boys, but sort of teenagers and stuff like that in, in, um, in outdoor scenes and things. Um, uh, sort of on the river bank or in a boat, but naked and stuff. So I looked at this book, horrified, and said, um, "Just let's just put it to one side, put it to one side." And thinking I was going to protect Doreen's um, memory, I was, what I was going to do was dump it, just, just burn it, get rid of it, and just get the thing. And we found three of them. So, no, 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 please, this is this is not pornographic. No. This is just young men naked. Um, in, in in natural poses with, within forests, with, with sitting in canoes, it's just just pictures like that. Uh, then we found a, uh, then we found a book uh, all on corporal punishment. So so now I've got four books uh, out of two thousand that uh, I think ought to be thrown away because of you know, preserving Dorian memory. 
then we found uh, a couple of books. Um, one was Mein Kampf, Hitler's, yeah. Hitler's books, um, and a couple of books by, well, not that we'd throw them away, but, but David Icke and, and what have you. So, so, you know, we suddenly realised the fact that Dorian's library, not only Dorian's library, but her interests were so, were so wide. But we couldn't understand these these books about these these young boys and the book on flagellation and yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. Four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I suddenly get this phone call from Ray. Have we thrown the books away? No, not yet. I'll do it tomorrow. And he said, "Don't, because Dory's written about them and all the things she, she got them from research." And that was a lesson. So everything that we got, we still got. We threw nothing away because we know that sooner or later, whatever it is in there will turn up and things. The biggest sadness of all of these things, um, the collection said that I got all of the magical stuff. And what I didn't get was this final cabinet full of correspondence. And in there she got letters from Joe Gardner, from all, all, the, all these handwritten letters that people have so in those days, it was everything had been handwritten. You, yeah. you was like down the post office, get your stamps, send it off, your correspondence all the time. Yeah. And I tried to explain to her son-in-law how important they were because he didn't know anything about what Dorian did really. He just knew that she was, she, she was, she was a witch in rose. And he said, "Well, you know, these are these are not really magical items. I don't think, John. They're kind of personal correspondence." So all of that went to, you know, went went to the flame and was thrown away. I'd love that. I mean, just from a historical point of view. Oh yeah, I can, I can only assume that uh, there would be progressive conversations with other yeah. members of uh, societies or yeah, you know, institutions. Back the Absolutely. You know, she'd write a letter, she'd get a reply back. She stored it. You know, she'd yeah. write another letter. They had it. We, you know, we, we could have tied all these letters up eventually. <laughs> the other thing that that uh, that we also missed out on is Dorian was writing two more books. One was pretty much finished. Um, and she didn't have a computer, she had a word processor, so they're all floppy disks yeah. and going in and out and stuff. And, and I tried, in the, you know, I, I was in an awful position because this, this wonderful lady had died. And, and she'd given me all of this stuff to, to do the right thing with, and I didn't feel that I could make any demands. So the letters, I, I could only argue so much and just say, well, you know, I didn't. I think that they're kind of important. Um, you know, would it be okay if we took them? And he said, no, uh, I've got you know, clear instructions and this is personal correspondence. That's that. And with the computer, I asked if, uh, if I could have the discs. And so, because I knew that there was another book on which we talked about the book. And the working title was Questions I've Most Been Asked. So it was kind of another ABC of witchcraft was one of them. And, uh, and the other one was, uh, which we've got quite a lot of, um, was kind of an expose uh, on people in the way that she felt the craft was going as well, uh, which will never get published. And um, we've got a book of short stories, which we're also going to bring out, that Dorian wrote. Um, but, so it's gone again. But the when I talked about the floppy disks and stuff, he, he said that uh, he wanted to keep a computer for his granddaughter. Um, and then when he got the book, when he got the computer home, she said, "Oh, granddad, that's just a ridiculous whole thing. You don't want that. That's no good to me." So they got thrown on the council table. <laughs> so we, we lost Dorian's lost ever book. Wow. And there's no way of uh, I've got no idea. I've got notes as to... Yeah, because I guess that she would have drafted quite a bit. Yeah. For 14 days of word process, and you can go back and rewrite stuff. Yeah. All the notes would have been stored yeah. on this drive. That was That was the biggest thing, I think. When he talks about how she would have felt about things, the internet and stuff, uh, I think that, she, uh, you know, if she could have had a computer, the, the modern computer now, I mean, that would have been just a fabulous thing for her. Yeah, it's a life.